first of all, let me um, welcome you uh, back to Viewpoint and the WHBB audience, Mr. Gordon. How are you? I'm great. This afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm doing fine. Um, I guess we've been keeping you pretty busy since uh, since you've been uh, uh, the director. We have been extremely busy. We've been running from east to west, north to south, and we've just been having an enjoyable time. And actually, we're just proud to have uh, the opportunity to reach our uh, constituents throughout the state. And we're just happy and uh, willing to still serve and just as uh, eager as we were back in October. So certainly, uh, certainly appreciate you for giving us a platform to speak today to your area. And uh, certainly just want to continue that dialogue and work with people. So um, for the benefit of our audience and for those uh, who may or may not have heard the interview with you the first time, give us a breakdown and definition on just uh, what the USDA Rural Development is all about and what you guys do. Sure, sure. Rural Development is a lead federal agency and working to increase economic development and to improve the quality of life in rural America. Of course, we have uh, over 40 programs um, that provide loans, grants, technical assistance uh, aimed towards helping uh, develop infrastructure, support business growth, uh, rural healthcare, education, sent to com uh, community facilities and services, and also uh, housing in the rural America and, and rural Alabama. Uh, of course, this month, we are, uh, uh, the month of June is National Home Owners Ownership Month. And uh, we've been working um, to get the word out about our programs. We've been specifically trying to let everyone know about our single family housing program. Uh, while home ownership is a, a good fit for many, many of our rural people engage uh, their communities by renting a home. Um, Renting allows uh, for flexibility, and especially valuable benefits as uh, at many stages of a person's life. But of course, um, the, the home ownership is what we're focusing on also. And certainly um, we wanna be specific when we say that, because there are some people who at this stage in their life, they may have a rental uh, need and some people have an ownership need. So we, we, we have a program to fit both uh, stages of a person's life. But um, we say that many families uh, are renting uh, in areas that they have a rent overburden and spending more than 30% of their income on rent. So we have a rental assistance program through rural development for our multifamily housing complexes. Now it is project-based rental assistance. It's not, it's, it's not tenant-based. So we can help people realize uh, opportunities in affording rents, and we can also uh, help people who have the income to build wealth by investing in their communities with home ownership. So, why is home ownership important uh, to the uh, uh, USDA? I think that rural America is a place that everyone can call home, and expanding opportunities of home ownership strengthens our rural communities and helps families and individuals build wealth and achieve financial stability. Well-built, energy efficient, affordable housing is essential to the vitality of the communities in rural, tribal America. And when you say own or rent a home, you're investing in and you're connected to where you live. And as we look forward to a new normal of building our economy back, better in 2020 and beyond, rural development is there to support rural Americans at any stage, whether that's just starting out a new job, moving to a new town, or other life changes brought on by the pandemic or other impactful events in our lives. These programs at rural development with our single family housing and multifamily housing provides rental assistance, home repairs, and other things, but rural development is here to improve the livability in rural Alabama and in rural America. So uh, can you uh, define for us what is uh, a rural, you know, when you say rural, 
you know, who do you serve? Do you not serve any cities or is it just rural or, or what does that mean? Well, it's based on populations. Um, we have, uh, for the housing program, we need to be 20,000 or less population. With the water and environmental programs, it is, it is just down 10,000 in, in community. So, for instance, the city of Selma is eligible for housing, but the city of Selma is not eligible for the direct program because of the limited income. Uh, the, the population is in excess of 10,000 for the water program. So it varies from program to program. With our business program, it goes up to 50,000. So it depends on which program we're speaking of as far as the definition of rural. So our rural communities, um, mostly for housing in that zone that you're speaking of, we have a nine county area. And mostly in your, your, your area where your audience particularly are, uh, there are areas that mostly will be eligible uh, with the exception of Prattville, Montgomery areas and places like that. But mostly in West Alabama, those areas are gonna be eligible. They're eligible for housing, you're saying, and and, and water as long as they're under, they're not over the ten thousand population. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Now, how does uh, how can USDA help people find a place to live? Okay. Uh, USDA uh, has several programs that are geared towards helping individuals and families buy homes in rural Alabama. Uh, the first program is our single family uh, direct loan program. The second program is our single family housing uh, guaranteed loan program, where those people who have uh, uh, excess uh, income uh, above the uh, low income limitations, they can get a guaranteed loan. And that's through uh, local lenders or regional lenders where the, the uh, uh, financing is guaranteed through the guaranteed program. So the single family housing program is our flagship program that we uh, highly encourage people if they are eligible uh, to, to apply for it. In addition to supporting home ownership, USDA also works to increase um, access to affordable multifamily housing, rental housing opportunities in rural America. Okay, now you said you're talking about the single family housing direct program. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, also, we, we, we have, um, I didn't mention also, sir, it's the Mutual Self-Help Housing Technical Assistance Grant Program, where we have uh, a couple of uh, the uh, grantors uh, in the area, such as the Sun Fees of Hope and Marion. And we have several other uh, um, potential uh, applicants who are going to come on board, and we're going to help with the Mutual, we have the Mutual Self-Help Programs, where they're going to be helping uh, homeowners uh, to put some labor into the uh, process and help to build their own home. So we have the mutual self-help program that will help with that also. So this is a building a new home or remodeling or building a new home from, from scratch? We can do both with the, uh, the self-help program, um, but primarily it'll be for new homes. Okay. Uh, what about the guaranteed uh, home loan program? Can you tell us about that? Well, yes. As I, uh, spoke on earlier, the guarantee program is where we have certified lenders or, or, or lenders in the uh, area that uh, are qualified to do underwriting for the guarantee program. That's when the uh, government backs the loan and gives them an opportunity to the guarantee program to acquire uh, funding. Of course, the guarantee funding and the guaranteed underwriting is a little bit more stringent than the single family program. So the higher income people will be able to meet those guidelines. Okay. Now, uh, what if somebody already has a home, but they want to get their home fixed or remodeled or home improvements? Can USDA Rural Development do that? Okay. Uh, the direct program? This would be for remodeling, you know, or, or uh, if you're already home, yeah. if you already own, you know. Sure. Already yes, the 504 program is a revitalization rehab program where we can go in and um, help the homeowner uh, to uh, do some repairs to their homes. Now, if the homeowner is uh, 62 years or older, uh, that possibly could qualify, and I want to emphasize this, for some grant dollars. And of course, our limits for the grant has increased to $10,000. 
but the grant is not a guarantee. It's, a, it's, a, it's based on feasibility and every applicant won't get the same amount. It's gonna be based on need and income and the availability of what they will have left. In other words, you may have two people living side by side and one may get an $8,000 grant and one may get a $4,000 grant. It's based on need and affordability and feasibility. So you, when you see one family with a higher income than another one and what's affordable, what's debt limitations are, we have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. So I don't want the, the, the people to get confused and say, well, I'm guaranteed to get a $10,000 grant. That's not the case. It's, it's, it's based on feasibility. And so sometimes we, we look at that and we have to make sure that we emphasize that. And also the um, loan portion of it is a 1% loan and it has been increased to uh, $40,000 instead of the 20,000. So therefore this is a great day and a good time we can possibly invest up to $50,000 into the 504 program, which is a good deal because of the increase of cost of materials. So we can understand that. Now, that is not to say that everyone will qualify for the 50000 Also, we have to look at the condition of the home. So there's a number of factors that will decide what an applicant will be able to obtain. What about credit? We will look at credit on all cases. We will look at things that beyond the bar's control, and we will make an analysis of that. Credit, uh, normally on these cases for the single family housing direct program is 640. However, if people are below that 640 score, there's still an opportunity for us to help them as long as they can prove and, and we can reduce some non traditional credit sources. If it was medical or something beyond the bar's control, we, we, we sometimes grant waivers there and look at ways to help our people. Okay. Um, now, how do people get in contact with you, uh, with your office? And um, do you have a local office or how, how does that work? Well, we, we have a area office across the state. Uh, the office that serves the Selma area is the Camden area office. Uh, of course, uh, we have an office in Tuskegee. We have an office in Bangladesh, have an office in Tuscaloosa. There's an office in Anniston, one in Coleman, one in Huntsville. And um, uh, I see you also have uh, uh, social media um, yes. uh, websites. What do you have? We do. We do. We have those uh, sites there. Uh, we have uh, RD. Uh, dot USDA.gov forward slash AL. And we got Twitter where we would do at RD underscore Alabama spelled out. And if if I go to your website, uh, does the website provide the state website? Does it um, provide the information that you just gave? Yes, it does. It does. We'll be able to do that. Um, I, I don't know that I've covered the um, Mutual self help in the entirety. Um, but the sort, certainly the self help program, I like to re emphasize there. It's uh, an ability and an opportunity for families and individuals to lower the overall purchase price of a new home by investing the sweat and equity in the construction of it. And of course, the grant team or the grantor must be coming in and work through us and get funding for the technical assistance side of it. And so therefore the mutual self-help program will allow our uh, uh, agency to do a series of homes through that program. And now, when, uh, you say, to... when you say self-help and sweat equity, so you're saying that, um, that a person could actually get involved uh, in, in, with a hammer and nails and a screwdriver and whatever else to help the carpenters build the house. And that yes, would count towards something. That's, yes, sir. That's correct. Based on their skill level, so the things that they're not uh, capable of doing, then of course they would hire it out to a construction management uh, and have that uh, grant for would have a construction manager there on site to make sure that the house complies with the uh, state laws and that the, the codes are adhered to. So, therefore, you wouldn't get a substandard house built, it's just the things that they will be able to do based on their skill level. If the, the, the homes will try to make sure that they're constructed simultaneously so that each family will have a 20% or whatever percent they can put into construction of the home. So, therefore, they could work together and make sure that it is a success. 
but we certainly uh, embrace that pro that program and, and we'd love to see more people get involved with the Mutual Chef Health program. Now, the Mother Family Housing Program, as I said earlier, it's uh, it supports rural home ownership. USDA say also works to increase access to affordable multifamily and rental housing opportunities in rural America. And there are several complexes around the Dallas County, Marengo County, and those areas. So um, most of those would be would be there to give support. And that there's a, a um, rental assistance that goes with those housing needs. Okay, and as we start wrapping up, since you've been director, um, what are you finding are some of the greatest needs and, and, and what has really impressed you the most about, you know, uh, your position and, 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 and what you're able to do to help people? Well, the, the housing program is a flagship program that we've embraced for years. And I feel like the housing program uh, provides a lot of opportunities to help families to go in the right direction. It helps economic development. It helps the vendors in the town. It creates jobs, it creates infrastructure. And you put pride back into home ownership. You put pride back into community. And we try to instill values and help communities to grow and prosper because of overall, if we're working and you're trying to enhance the lives of the individuals, we have to go there, touch bases on the ground with them and allow them to have opportunities to improve their way of living. And also, when we say wealth in the community, if they invest in home ownership, then they're, they're walking them, their way away from poverty. And so we we'll want to provide opportunities in our real community to help them home ownership, put pride in the children. If they, it's instead of shown that they do better in school when they can have a decent place to come home to. So in, 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 in Alabama, we all need to call Will Alabama a place that we uh, love to live and call our home. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our audience? I'd like to say that we certainly want to look at what the needs are in our rural communities and work with you in a manner that's productive and help people because that's what we need to be doing with, with this agency. And certainly that's something that I'm very, very passionate about working in our rural communities and empowering our leaders and our communities to be better and to have uh, what everyone else has across America. That's uh, home ownership and working in a manner that's productive, not just with one program, but all 40 programs that we offer across the broad sector of the community. Uh, we're here as a partner and we have been amplifying our programs and we want to certainly reach out to our partners and leaders in these communities and tell them that we're here as a partner to help whatever their needs are, please contact our office. Okay, well, <clears throat> thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. And, um, and we'll talk to you uh, the next time.